Hey everybody, and welcome back to Twin Show Studio. And today we're going to be going through the ultimate dolphin emulator setup guide for 2022 so you can run your GameCube and Nintendo Wii games perfectly on your PC. I'm going to be going through some of the problems that you might come in contact with and how to fix them. So sit back, relax, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's just dive into it, shall we? So the first thing we need to do is get a copy of Dolphin itself. So we'll go to dolphin-emu.org forward slash download. Link will be in the description down below. And we need to get a copy of Dolphin. Now the version we want, there's plenty of versions. It can be quite confusing here. They have the stable version, but the stable version is five years and seven months old. So a lot of people come to my videos and they're like, why does my version of Dolphin look different from yours? And that's mainly because most people assume that this is the version that you need, the stable version. It is not. It is five years old. It, there are plenty of features that have been developed since then, and they are all in the beta version. The beta version is, in theory, the most up-to-date version, and it is the most stable version. As you can see here, the last update was two months, three weeks ago. Um, before that, it was on a monthly release schedule, but they have missed the latest release, so they're probably implementing some new features there. And then there are the developmental versions, which are less stable. I mean, you can still use them. They do work, but they will show some like experimental features and things like that. So we find the beta version, the latest beta version, which is 5.0-15445 as of recording. And by the time you've probably watched this video, it probably will be a different version than that. So click on the Windows version of it, Windows X64 for 64-bit. I'll bring up the options to open the file or save it. We're going to want to save that file. And then another thing that we're going to need to do is to get the Visual C++ redistributable for Windows Visual Studio 2019 because it will not work without this as well. So a link to this will be in the description down below or you can just click this link here and it'll take you straight to it. And what we want are the 2019 version. So we have the X64, 64-bit version of Windows, which most people should have by now. But if you want to check, you can go to System Information. And as you can see, we've got X64 based PC. So we want the X64 version. So we click that and save that file as well. Now that we've got everything that we need in our downloads folder, first I'm gonna install Visual Studio. So we click agree to license terms. It's from the Microsoft website, so it is perfectly safe. And it's gonna ask you to restart the computer. And we'll restart it just to make sure everything is running fine. Once computer's restarted, we're going to want to extract the Dolphin file itself. So we go back to the downloads folder and we find the Dolphin master and we've realized it is a 7-zip file. So we're going to need another program called 7-zip. So you go to 7-zip.org. We're on the 64-bit X4 of Windows. So we click download to download the 64-bit. If you're on 32-bit, you download the 32-bit version. Not many people are these days. So once that has been downloaded, back to the downloads, and we have 7-zip.execute. Let's get that installed. That'll install it there. Very quick process. Now, when we have this Dolphin master file, we right-click on it. On Windows 11, you click Show More Options. On Windows 10, all this will show up anyway. We go to 7-zip here, and we click Extract to Dolphin-Master 5.0 etc and we just wait for it to extract now we have dolphin emulator installed and we need to put it somewhere where we're going to be launching it from anyway so if i put this into my desktop double click the dolphin folder and dolphin.exe double click that and it will fire straight back up now you can authorize Dolphin to report information to developers. This will give them information it needs, or you can choose not to if you want to. It's entirely up to you. So there is Dolphin. Now is the time to set it up and get it ready to run some games. So the first thing you want to do is to go to your documents folder. And now in your documents folder, there will be a Dolphin emulator folder. Right click on this, click on properties. And what you want to do is to change this. It says read only. You need to click that off, click apply, 
and apply changes to this folder, subfolders and files. Now what this is going to be able to do is allow this Dolphin folder to write things to it and it's going to help with memory card issues and things like that. So when you're writing, uh, if you want to be able to save your games or you want it to be able to save the configuration, one of the questions I get asked a lot is why is my Dolphin settings not saving and that is why. That documents folder there, it's a right click and go to properties and turn the read only off and click apply so that it is not a read only folder. Also, another thing that you want to do is pin this to the taskbar so that now when you close Dolphin, like so, it will always be in your taskbar and you can open it from there. You can right click, right click on Dolphin and then click run as administrator and that will also help if you're having problems with saving games to the memory cards and things like that. Now we just need to set up Dolphin to run fine. So first thing we need to do is to find the games directory. So if we double click and then I will find where I keep all my games, my ROMs folder there, click select folder and it will start to fill it with all the games that I've got. Next, we want to click on the config section here and a couple of things that we need to do here is number one, I want to enable cheats so that I can use action replay codes and set the auto update to the beta so that every time there's a new beta, it will auto update. You can also set it to the developmental if you want, but that updates daily and it's gonna affect when you're playing games. The beta is the one that I prefer to. And then the fallback region, I always set this to NTS-U because that's the American region and it will be 60 Hertz mostly. On the interface section here, I'm going to download covers from gametdb.com for use in grid mode. This is going to download all the covers for the games that I'm using. And then the final thing I want to do in this config section here is where it says search subfolders. So I go to the paths bit here and click search subfolders. And then that will search all the subfolders that I have for the ROMs. So I have my ROM set up with like A, B, C, D, things like that. So any folders that you make within your ROMs folder is then going to show all of them as well. And close that config one. Then I can go to view, click to grid view. And that is my preferred way of viewing the games. Now, some people like it in the list mode so that everything's listed perfectly there. But person, my personal preference is the grid mode, and you can do that as well. And because I've downloaded all the box art from the game database, all of the box art is there. Next thing I want to do is to click the graphics at the top there. So the graphics menu will come up. And here is all the different graphics sections. Now, one of the great things that Dolphin does is that when you hover over it, it will give you a description of what each thing does. And at the bottom in the yellow, it says, if unsure, select OpenGL. If unsure, leave this unchecked. If unsure, leave this uh, mode on. So it will give you sort of a guide to the default settings. So if you are having any issues and you mess something up on here, you can go back and it'll tell you what the default setting is anyway. But what I like to do is on the back end, I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card. So I like to use Direct 3D11, which will then let me choose the adapter that I use, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060. If I was using a AMD card, like my AMD Radeon graphics, then I would use the Vulkan back end. Now each game reacts differently to the back end. It is honestly a minefield when it comes to designing which back end that you use. Every computer and every adapter reacts differently to different types of emulation. So your computer may run better in OpenGL. When in doubt, use OpenGL. It is the most stable, but I like to use Direct 3D 11. Direct 3D 12, which is basically Direct X 12, is sometimes working well, but it is not 100% at the minute. Direct 3D 11 has been the most stable for me so far. Choose my adapter, my RTX 3060. Yours will fill in there. I'm gonna click show FPS just because I like to see the FPS. In shader compilation, specialized is the one that's gonna be recommended for low end hardware and it's the one that's gonna be the most stable. And I also tick compile shaders before starting and that way that's gonna um, stop a lot of the stutter because sometimes when the games are playing, it's trying to build the shaders and build the shader cache. If you compile them all before starting, it's gonna take a bit longer for the games to actually load up the more you play them but you're gonna be reducing a lot of the stutter if you compile the shaders before you start. In the enhancement section, I choose 1080p for the internal resolution. If you're having trouble, put it back down to the native one, but most of the time I like to play mine in 1080p. 
anti-aliasing. This is all NVIDIA, like stuff that makes everything look smooth, smooths out all those jagged edges. I just whack everything up to full. And then while the game is playing, if I'm having a bit of stutter or something like that, I'll bring these settings down. These two settings I'll bring down or bring up if there's any stutter and it will usually alleviate that problem. And those are really the only things I change here. And like I said, if yours looks different from mine from the default setting, all you've got to do is scroll over the setting and read what it says about it. It'll tell you what it does. It might be go over your head. Sometimes this goes over my head, but it will say in yellow at the bottom, if unsure, leave this unchecked. If unsure, leave this checked. And that will give you the um, best, what is usually the best settings for the emulator. The last thing that I'm going to show you is how to set up a controller. So I'm going to have the, the Xbox Series S Power A enhanced controller that I bought. Fantastic little controller. I'm going to try and get a review out on that. And if I'm playing a GameCube game, we click the GameCube controller and the standard controller. So all your GameCube controllers are at the top and your Wii remotes and your emulated Wii remotes are at the bottom here. So if I'm playing a GameCube game, I go to this GameCube one. This is port one, two, three, and four. So you can have multiplayer and I'll be doing a video on showing you how to get multiplayer set up in the future. But we'll start with just one controller. And the first thing we want is the standard controller. I mean, you can do dance mats and steering wheels and things like that. There's a lot of different controllers that you can set up for the GameCube. We're going to start with a standard controller. You click configure, and then we need to find our device. So here is the controller setup. You click find the device. We want the X input zero gamepad because that's my device. Yours might be different if you're using a different type of controller. And then what we do is we click each button. Each button here is uh, set up for the GameCube controller so button a is button a on the controller i will click that and then i'll press a on the controller no i press b i'll click that and i'll press a on the controller and i'll set it up that way b x y and then obviously z at the top will be the right click and then start so i'll just set that up really quick this is the d-pad down here And then as I click each button, I put in the corresponding controls. And I'll do a full video on this in the future of how to set up the Xbox controller. For this, make sure you click always connected to make sure that the controller is always connected. Click close. And then if we was doing a Wiimote, we'd click emulated Wiimote. If we we're playing a Nintendo Wii game, click configure. And the same principle applies here. Only this one has a lot more features such as motion, nunchucks, and things like that. And I'll be going through all of that in a future video. So now we have my GameCube controller all set up. I'm going to choose a GameCube game. And how we launch the games, you can either double click on the game or you can click on the game. We'll start with, start with Fight Night Round 2. So I'll click on that game, click play. So I just had to change the music off because obviously for copyright reasons, I had to turn all the music off. But as I saved the game there, you can see in the top left corner, that's saved to my memory card. So everything's working fine there. And I'll just click a cheeky play. I'll just show you it running in action. Okay, so I'm going to press Alt Enter to get this out of full screen and drag this to the side here and drag that there. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So this game is currently in four by three, which is the aspect ratio for it. So if I change that to four 16 by nine, that's gonna pull that into widescreen for me. So these are the things that you can do while the game's running to check. So if you're having issues with the game stuttering, you can bring up the graphics console. I can change the anti-aliasing, the anisotropic filtering to see if anything's going wrong there. And just having a look around and everything seems to be going fine. So let's have a look. Uh, so then now when I get this into full screen again, it is now in widescreen. I don't know what I'm doing in this. My sister could do better and I don't have a sister. So we're running a smooth 60 frames per second in widescreen. And for some reason, I'm doing an intense workout with Bernard Hopkins. I've... 
These were great games, Fight Night. I really wish that they'd bring these out again. So there you go, you can see it's running. If I wanna end the emulation, I just click escape. Stop the current emulation. Yes, there we go. And that is everything set up and running and you can have a fantastic time playing your favorite GameCube games. Let me know down in the comment which GameCube or Nintendo Wii games you will be playing on Dolphin Emulator. Let me know if you want any specific controller setups because I get a lot of requests for that. I'm currently working on uh, Spider-Man Web of Shadows and someone asked for the Spider-Man 2 setup. So I'm going to try and get that done this week as well. It's also my birthday this week, so I'm going to be... Uh, a bit busy as of Wednesday, but hopefully I'll get some of those videos out in the next couple of weeks. So if you like this video, then please hit that like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you want more videos like this, let me know because these are the videos that get the most views. Uh, if you have any questions also, let me know down in the comments. And I'll try and make a video or answer them in the comments. And remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do.